Hey everyone, my name is Ajay and this is part 7 for SD-WAN series and today we are going to discuss about how SD-WAN control plane is formed and how it influences the data plane. Let's get started. So before we discuss each and every component, we also need to understand the capacity planning. So for example, if you are planning your SD-WAN network, how many V manages in it? This is one of the component for managing your entire infrastructure. So maximum you can deploy the six instance in a cluster. Though they can be distributed, you can do this on-prem or if you want to do it on the cloud, you might choose different different zones or you also have option to choose different service provider. So if you're managing 2000 devices, that is something can be handled by single instance. If you have more than 2000 devices, based on the number, you need to decide how many we manage instance you need and whether you want to go for some sort of high availability. So all those factor comes in place, but you cannot go beyond six instances for SD-WAN fabric. Very similar thing with the vSmart, that's a controller. So you can deploy up to max 20 vSmart controllers and one controller can handle 5,400 connections per single vSmart. The third component is V1, that is your orchestrator. Maximum six orchestrators can be deployed and one orchestrator can handle 1,500 connections. When we talk about the control plane, it is very similar to the control plane we used to have on the Cisco routers, which basically build your routing table. So here, routing table is built based on the TLOC routes, OMP routes, and the service routes. And route reflector concept is played on a vSmart. So it is a controller basically. So all the updates which comes from the cloud client, those are the VH devices. It goes to the vSmart first and vSmart further going to distribute similar update to rest of the clients. So it acts as a route reflector. These routing updates are used to influence how VanEdge build the data plane. Let's try to understand how these components talk to each other and form the control connections. So initial deployment, we are going to build the vSmart, vManage, and the vBond. It is kind of the SD-WAN fabric, which should be up and running before you launch any of the VH device. And these controllers, they are going to form tunnel to each other. So V1, it works on the DTLS. So my connection from vSmart to V1, it is always going to be the DTLS. And this cannot be changed. Similarly, if I see my connection from vManage to DTLS with V1, However, I have an option to change port which works on the TLS and that option is available on the vSmart and the vManage. So I have an option. I can form connection between the vSmart and vManage that can be either T DTLS or TLS. By default, all the SD-WAN component attempts to use a DTLS, UDP-based port, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 to establish the control connections. I'm assuming this fabric is up and running. So these tunnels, they try to form connection to each other and all the authentication, it happens based on the certificate, what you install. Now it's time to launch a VS device. So VS device is should first connect to your V1. So it is mandatory to have V1 it should be the public facing because most probably you are going to host SD-WAN fabric somewhere running on the cloud. So I'm assuming I have only one connection on the VH, which is the internet facing, and I have the IP address of the V1. So first VH try to connect to V1, and that is going to be the DTLS. 
I might have some sort of problem. Maybe this device which might be behind the firewall or maybe my ISP is blocking my port 12346. So there are four base port hop options are given. It is going to try the first port. If it fails, it is going to try the next port and it will try all the ports and then come back to the original port. This is applicable when you have some sort of the port blocking scenario. Or maybe you have two VH devices, VH1, VH2, behind the firewall and you are doing some sort of the NAT. So you need to do the separation. It is going to choose at least two different ports. So this is how it try to form the connections to be bond. And once you are authenticated, that authentication happen based on the serial number, JC number and the certificate, which is which comes by default with the VH. Once you're authorized by the B-Bond, B-Bond is going to return the IP address for rest of the controllers and you can start forming the tunnels. As we already discussed, all the SD-WAN component attempt to use DTLS UDP based port 12346 by default to establish connections. However, this is a small catch. By default, the vManage and vSmart controllers, they run on virtual machines and they might have vCPUs allocated and that can be maxed up to eight cores. And now the port will depend what core is being used. So for example, if you're going to establish a connection to vSmart and uh, if the first Code is being used, your port is going to be the default 12346. Similarly, if you go for the second core, this is a port, and if you go for eighth, the port is going to be 13046. And this is for the UDP when we talk about the DTLS. Similarly, if I change port from DTLS to TLS, the port gets changed. So these are the TCP ports. So my first TCP port is going to be one, sorry, as two, three, four, five, six for my first vCPU. And similarly for eight, it is going to be two, four, one, five, six. So it will depend where that particular connection is being terminated. Let's talk about now how many connections they are going to form between all these components. So no control connections are formed between the redundant V-Bond orchestrator. You might have many in your network, but you're not going to have any connection between the V-Bond. So in the diagram, we don't see any connection between these two V-Bonds. Only one control connection is formed between each vSmart to vSmart controller. Again, it's the same scenario. You might have more than two, but you are going to have only single connection between two vSmart controller which we see here. Only one control connection is formed between vManage to vManage server. In a cluster of vManage, you might have multiple vManage instance, and there's not going to be many connection. It's limited to the one connection. If you have multiple vManage, that is going to be like that. Each core up to maximum eight on the vManage are possible. And vSmart initiate and maintain a control connection to each vBond. So here on the vManage, I have four virtual CPUs. So you can see the vBond is having only one CPU, so I can see the number of connections are going to be four. One, two, three, and four. Very similar here. Since we have two vBond, it is going to form connection to the vManage as well. So one, two, three, and four connections. A single connection is maintained between the vManage and each vSmart controller. So we can see I have two vSmart controller 
and one we manage so i only see two connections here a v smart with two core so here in our example i'm mentioning as a just one v cpu but i might have more so if i increase the cpu from one cpu to two so it is going to have two control connection from v smart to v bond since we have one so we can see there are two connection one is formed to one v bond another one goes to the another v one if i have two the number of connection is going to be double this dtls tunnel between the va edge and v bond this is the only connection which is temporary the moment your device is authenticated and authorized into the network you're not going to see this connection in the connection table so in this example i have one vs device and i have one mpls connection and the second connection is internet connection and in my deployment i have two v1 so this is my first this is my second v1 on my first v1 my ip address which is given is 172.31.255.100 slash 24 and my second v1 it is having the ip address 198.18.255.100 slash 24 when I take a look on the local property of, I mean, BH device, this is what we see. So first of all, the color which is assigned to my internet as public internet. The second connection is the MPLS connection. My state is up. These are the interfaces being used for this connectivity and the public ip address and private ip addresses we can see here so my public ip address since the first one is the internet i assume this is public interface with the public ip address configured which is 198.18.5.200 and the public port as 12346 i see the private IP address is also same. And the reason behind, I'm not doing any sort of the natting. Now, if I talk about the MPLS, MPLS IP is 198.19.5.2. And this is the discovered IP address, means it's a public IP address because from MPLS you cannot reach to internet. So you have to go through some sort of the NAT device which gives you the internet reachability. So this is the discovered IP address 192.168.0.21. And look at the port. This is a public port. When you do the NATing, these ports get changed. Now, if I take a look on the show control connections, I see I have control connections to for vSmart. These control connections, if you look at the IPs, two IPs are going to be the same. So peer public IP 102, 102, 102, 102. But here is a 31, here is a eight, here is 18. It means I'm having two V smart in my network and uh, each interface is going to form two separate connections. Then I see a single V managed connection. As we discussed earlier, one edge device, it is only going to maintain one connection to V manage. So if you, since I have two two kind two type of the connectivity, it is going to try to reach V manage from both interfaces however the first established connection will be formed and second will be dropped so technically you are going to see only one connection so here we see my my v managed connection it is established from the mpls since we are talking about the v1 connectivity i don't see any v1 connection here 
And the reason behind, since it's a temporary connection, once everything is authorized, you're not going to see it. But you can always go and look the connection history. If you run the command show control connection hyphen history, it is going to tell you that there was this, uh, some sort of the reachability to the VBON. And this reachability, we can see there are two VBON, so both the connections they are going to try to reach there. So from public internet, I'm going to try to connect my VBON. So those are going to be the two connections since I have two VBON. And similarly from the MPLS, I'm going to connect to V1 and that is also going to be the two connections. And since this is a temporary connection, so it is not going to be there in the control connections anymore. But initially when you are doing some sort of deployment, you can see in the connection table as well when it is connecting and doing some sort of the authorization. And the state is tear down because this is the history. This connection no more exists. There is no error reported. So everything uh, looks good as expected. So when we do the initial deployment, let's talk about the stage when the stage when it is going to be authentication and authorization between the VH and the V bond. So this is a DTLS connection which is formed with the V bond and there's an authentication which is happening in the parallel that is based on the serial number, JC, organization name and uh, the SSL certificate what you have which comes and built with this device. So this is TPM chip and these TPM chips they are tempered proof on your SSL certificate which is going to be installed on this TPM. So once your authentication and authorization is completed, this V1 device, it is going to inform the rest of the controllers that there's a new edge device got introduced to the network. So this notification goes to all the controllers. And in return, it is going to give you the IP address of the controllers. So it gives you the IP address for the vManage, all the vSmarts, what you have. Only one V1 control connection is made per transport when multiple V1 orchestrator exist. And we have seen that in our connection history previously. So in the stage two, once my authentication and authorization is done, I'm not going to see this connection, which is a DTLS connection to the V1 anymore. And there's a new edge notification which goes to the rest of the controllers. And then, once in the response which is returned from the VBON, my edge device which is going to receive the controller IP address, it is going to form control connections to controller and the vManage. These are the permanent connections established. And we already discussed about the vManage connection. If you have multiple transport, only one vManage connection is going to establish. So whosoever is the first one, it remains there and the next connection get dropped. You might have a situation, maybe you're using multiple link and you want to restrict that transport to form a vManage connection. So you can set the priority and you can make it permanent with the transport you want to form connection to the vManage. So that possibility is there. Otherwise it is going to be the random. So if I look at the connection table, we can see it has formed the vSmart and vManage connections already. I might have a situation where I have a one VH device with three Connectivity. My first connectivity is the internet connectivity, second is the MPLS, and third one is the 4G LT. Maybe it's 5G. And I see a behavior my control connection to vManage, it is formed over the LT that I don't want. And the reason behind this is slow link, it might be flapping, so I might be losing this connectivity to vManage again and again. So the option which is given to us is we manage connection preference, it can be set. So by default, the value is five. 
the value zero is used to indicate that the connection is never made to be managed over the tunnel so go to the vpn zero since all these transport they are part of the vpn zero go to the interface where you have the lt connection terminated under the tunnel interface you can set this command we manage connection preference and make this value zero so it's never going going to form a tunnel to be managed over the LT connection. We have seen it is recommended to have multiple vSmart controllers for the redundancy purpose. You might end up with a situation where you lost vSmart controller connections from VH device. In that case, also your control plane is going to work for next 12 hours by default. That is a graceful restart timer. However, you have option, you can change that value from the command. And once you remember, we were talking about uh, having the control connections to other controllers. So once the connection, which is made from vManage to VS device, all the configuration is posed by we manage device. We might have templates where the configuration is stored. So this is going to be the management point. Uh, it is in the form of the netconf, which happens over the DTLS or TLS connection you might have between VH and vManage. This is going to be one more connection to vSmart from VS device. And that is something called the OMP peering. All the routing information it is received on this OMP peering. And OMP peering it is from form from the system IP address. So you might have multiple transport to VH, but you are going to have only one system IP address. So you can see it's a router identifier when we talk in terms of the OSPF or maybe the BGP. On my screen, we can see the screenshot which I have taken from a lab. I'm running two vSmart controller. So it has formed two OMP peers. This is my peer. This is showing the uptime. This is the site ID. So site ID, uh, we're going to talk about site ID, system ID and all those things in a while so all this controller including the vs device they are mandated to have the site id address and the system ip address here we can see the routes received from my first controller is 72 i received the same routes from my second controller as well however i'm going to install routes from one and that is something based on whosoever is having the lower system IP address. So in this case, since I have 52 and 53, so 52 is going to be the lower. So only route received from the controller, which is 52, are going to be installed in my VS device. Let's talk about the site ID. So a site ID is a unique identifier of the site in the SD-WAN overlay network with the numeric value 1 to 2 to the power 32 minus 1 and it identifies the source location of an advertised prefix very very similar to the bgp and the ospf the id must be configured on every van edge device so if my this is my first edge i have a given the site id is 10 this is second edge device where the site id 20 this is 30 that also includes all the controllers so it's just the functionality is not limited to the vs devices but you need to give the site id on each and every controller in the network however if you have a site with two vs device they might be running in hap here you have to ensure that the site id which you are giving is same so they should not form a tunnel between each other so ipsec tunnel 
it should be between sites not something within the same site and within the same vh cluster let's talk about the system ip the system ip is a unique identifier of the vanish device across the st1 fabric it is like a router id in the traditional routing protocol such as ospf and the vgp and not need to be routable or reachable across the fabric so the movement so let's take a look on this vs device this is under system and this is the system ip address the moment you do this configuration you can see since by default this is part of the vpn0 so i'm going to see i'm going to see how many interfaces i have part of the vpn0 so show interface vpn0 we can see these many interfaces they're already part of vpn0 and the system id which we configured is also part of vpn0 it has got the same ip address 81 slash 32 since it is a kind of the loop back so host ip need to be given and the type of this interface is loop back so the moment you give the system ip it creates a loop back ip address As I mentioned, it is not supposed to be routable, but the recommended practice is this, that you can create a loop back on the VS device, give the same IP address, and make it a part of the service VPN. So this IP also reachable from service VPN side, maybe for the management purpose. Let's talk about the transport color. So the color attributes applies to the Vanage routers or vManage and vSmart controllers and helps to identify an individual T-lock. Different T-locks are assigned different color labels and you cannot use the same color twice on a single van edge router. On my screenshot, you can see under the tunnel interface configuration if you type color under the question mark it is going to return the values what are the possible options for the color are available so you can divide into public and private so you see the bridge internet blue bronze gold green and there's a lt for 4g and then you have a metro ethernet mpls and you have private one to private six. So you can see which one uh, can be used for the public, which one can be used for the, uh, like uh, private interfaces or transport. These colors are uh, something aesthetically defined, so you cannot change it as well. So you only have option to choose from here. And these T lock color basically they decide whether the private or public IP address will be used when attempting to form a data plane tunnel to the remote T lock. We just talk about the T lock that one edge can form a data connection to another edge or the T lock and using the colors. So let's try to understand what is a T lock. So if I have one VH device and I might have some sort of the NAT device in between to reach to the internet. So I'm going to have the private IP address here on the VH device and the public IP address on some NAT device. And on the other side, I have a public IP address. So T lock means what is my system IP address? What is the color assigned to that? tunnel interface and then what is the encryption so i have a two method of forming the tunnel one is going to be the ipsec and one is gre here we are going to talk about the ipsec so t lock means if i have this transport which is internet so it will take my system ip it might be in whatever the loop back we set then what is the exact ip address 
So this is a private, this is a public, and we talked about the Istun also. So Istun, it does the, it's a functionality on the Bborn which basically detects what is your discovered IP address. So this is called TLock, and this is let's talk about the TLock route. So in the TLock route, this is kind of the OMP update one edge device which sends to controller and then controller is further going to distribute to rest of the VS devices. So what it contains, the TLock, it is going to contain your system IP address, your site ID, what is your private IP and the port, what is your public IP and the port, what is your preference and what is the color you have on that particular interface. So now let's understand, here I have mentioned Bridge Internet. This site will also have the similar table, which it is going to send it to controller and controller is going to send it to this VH. So both the sites, I'm going to have a very, very similar table. My left-hand side, since I'm doing a NAT, so I see private IP address and public IP address, those are going to be the different. And here, since I have a public IP address, my private and public IP addresses are going to be the same. Now I have a reachability information about the T-Log. If I want to talk to system 1111, this site might be 2222. So how I should form the tunnel? So I'm going to use base internet. And these colors basically going to define how the tunnel should be formed. Since it's a public, it is going to tell you should able to form tunnel on this public IP address. What if it was MPLS? The moment we see the color is MPLS, it is going to say since as a MPLS, which is a private transport, form the tunnel on this private IP address. And this is all the information which is exchanged by the smart controller. Let's try to understand how these VFT tunnels are formed. So in my first VH, I have a T lock, which is T1. The second interface means it's a T2. Similarly, on the remote device, I have two T locks, T3 and T4. By default, they are going to form tunnel to each other. So we see four tunnels since we have two interfaces both hand however anyways let's first discuss how the tunnels is formed so t1 to t3 that's my first tunnel t1 to t4 it is going to be my second tunnel t2 to t3 it is going to be third tunnel t2 to t4 is going to be my fourth tunnel so for a moment just assume they both t logs they are two different internet service provider and i should be able to consume all the available bandwidths so this type of scenario it is perfectly fine what if my second t lock is mpls where I don't have any reachability from internet to this, since that is private and my internet is something public infrastructure. So I can restrict it also, this behavior of making it full mesh. And that is something is done under the VPN zero, go to the tunnel interface and say color MPLS restrict. The moment you define this on that particular interface, it is only going to form tunnel between MPLS. So if I say now the T1 is public, this is my MPLS, this is my public, this is my MPLS. So technically I should have one tunnel which is formed from T1 to T3, that is my public and second tunnel 
should be T2 to T4 that is going to be over MPLS. That is something what we expect. So you can restrict it by making some configuration tweaks. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.